The historic city of Nanjing bears the most poignant wartime memory of the Chinese people. Early in December 1937, the Japanese invaders marched towards Nanjing. On December the 13th, they occupied the city and set about murdering the inhabitants in a bloody massacre. Both Chinese military personnel and civilians in the city became their target as the unprecedented bloodbath began. On December the 16th, thousands of disarmed Chinese soldiers and civilians were sent to Jiangdongmen and massacred at nightfall. As described in the documents submitted at the Tokyo trials, the Japanese troops committed acts of murder, rape and arson at random. After six weeks, more than 200,000 Chinese people had been killed. According to the official archives and the headcount presented at the Nanjing trials, the number of victims far exceeded 300,000. However, this brutal war crime is still disputed by today's Japanese government and sections of the country's citizenry. No, ma'am. Uh, we did not commit uh, any uh, massacre there in 1937. None? Uh, the press uh, fabricated complete fabrication by uh, the Chinese. There are some wartime documents preserved in the archives of Jilin province, which were left by the Japanese army when it was fleeing China after the surrender. During the war, letters sent home by soldiers were strictly censored by army officers. Any letters containing references to wartime atrocities were seized. Chinese people were routinely beheaded. I couldn't stop weeping when I saw little children being abused, but I knew they were from the enemy country and would cause us a lot of trouble when they grew up, so I threw them into the fire. When officials at the Japanese Ministry of War heard about the mass killings perpetrated by its troops, they didn't intervene. But the massacre in Nanjing shocked the Western world and Japan received warnings from other countries, including the US, Great Britain and even Germany. Under pressure from the international community, the commander of the Japanese Central China Area Army, Iwane Matsui, was removed from his post. When he was recalled to Japan, the general received a warm welcome from the Japanese people. After the Tokyo trials, Iwane Matsui was executed. However, from the 1950s onwards, right-wing forces in Japan attempted to whitewash the atrocities committed during the Nanjing massacre. We may have killed a, a few thousand. But certainly not uh, in the order of 100,000, 200,000 or 300,000. Nanjing 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 だから南京大虐殺が明らかになるのはずっと後でしょ中国や世界では1937年にはもうすでに知ってた日本では極秘だった極秘そしてそれが戦争に負けてからも極秘だった in Tokyo's Tama Cemetery is 83-year-old Mingawa. He was born in Shanghai. His father ran three textile companies in wartime China. He stayed in China during the war and returned to Japan after the surrender.
The memorial hall of the victims of the Nanjing massacre committed by Japanese invaders is built on a mass grave where hundreds of thousands of Chinese people are buried. There is a huge amount of physical evidence of atrocities perpetrated by the Japanese troops, including film footage shot by foreigners, trial documents used in international tribunals, and diaries of Japanese war criminals, and so on. A total of 150,000 pieces of evidence are preserved here. その in January 2013, Yukio Hatayama, a politician from the Democratic Party of Japan and a former Japanese Prime Minister, paid a private visit to the Nanjing Massacre Memorial Hall. He was condemned for this action by right-wing forces in Japan. His office building in Tokyo is under heavy guard and strict security measures are in place. Even so, the police often come here to protect him from abuse by right-wingers. During the Second World War, hundreds of thousands of women and girls from China and South Korea were forced by the Japanese army to serve as sex slaves, suffering incarceration and brutal rape. In a blatant violation of international law, Japan also engaged in biological and chemical warfare. The notorious Unit 731 carried out lethal human bacteriological experiments and committed flagrant crimes against humanity. However, none of these crimes were addressed in the Tokyo trials after the war for a variety of reasons. This resulted in Japan's reluctance to assume responsibility. いや、今でも例えば謝罪の気持ちを持つとまた賠償をどんどん出てくるじゃないかと。そうなったら予算の問題も大変だねと。どんどん広がっていくぞと。だからもう戸口は一度肩がついたんだからもうその問題は済んだ
あの教科書に載ってた載ってなくて先生が資料を持ってきてくれて DVD みたいな The history textbook controversy is another issue which has given rise to conflict between Japan and its Asian neighbors, including China and South Korea, in recent years. In Japan, i 1955, the Democratic Party of Japan made the first challenge and committed the greatest distortion of history textbooks used by schools. The fact that the Nanjing Massacre had even taken place was denied, while the Japanese Army's invasion of China was rewritten using the phrase advanced into instead of invaded. In 1956, the Japanese Ministry of Education assigned a group of professionals as textbook authorization and research officers. Textbooks issued by all publishing houses had to be checked, and any content which was evaluated as being unqualified had to be revised. The Ministry of Education rejected the history textbook drafted by a Japanese historian named Saburo Ainaga because of its descriptions of the Nanjing Massacre, Unit 731. Comfort women and Japan's colonial rule of Korea. In 1965, Subaru Ayanaga filed a lawsuit against the Ministry of Education, accusing it of violating the peace constitution and interfering with academic and educational freedom. Jiang Sanlang, 呢，他没有参加过战，他呢，战争期间呢，他就是教师。我当时我也问他，我说为什么你要做这件事儿？他当然拿了一个很，这个蓝布包的一个包，里面包的都是那个旧的。不得了的那个教科书，当年的那个日本的历史教科书，翻开来看，其中还有那个到满洲去，就满洲就是我们中国东北嘛，说搞到满洲去建设繁荣的社会。他说当年我就是用这样的教科书教学生的，虽然我没有到过战场，我也没有杀过人，但是我的学生们很多都被征兵了，到战场也杀了人了。他说其实我们是有责任的，为什么？我们的责任就叫无作为，就是我对这个战争没有制止，我根本没什么没干，我我还是我觉得好像没有责任，他是不对的。Ainaka's appeal was rejected in the first two lawsuits, resulting in a heated debate about the acknowledgement of history in Japanese society. Then, in 1984, Ainaka filed a third lawsuit. Lasting for 32 years, the issue of Ayanaga versus Japan became an issue of great concern both domestically and internationally. In 1997, the Supreme Court finally ruled that the textbooks written by Saburo Ayanaga were legal. Many historical issues, including the Nanjing Massacre, reappeared in school textbooks in Japan from then on. 97年他的判决的时候下来的时候，当年的日本的历史教科书是写的最好的时候。This is the history textbook written by Saburo Ayanaga for senior school students, published after the final verdict. In order to comply with the Ministry of Education's curriculum guidelines, there are only four to five pages about the warfare in China during the Second World War in this 500-plus page textbook, and many historical events were downplayed. The教科书的审判刚刚有一个结果了，右派这边呢，又推动就成立一个新历史教科书编写编写会。那他觉得那时候的教科书都按照江永三郎这种立场已经有，已经朝这个方向努力了，怎么办？我们呢，再编另外再
On the campus of the University of International Business and Economics in Beijing are Lucas and Timo, overseas students from Germany. When talking about their history education in secondary school, what impressed them most was the section of the syllabus about the Nazis and the Holocaust. I don't know if it was Auschwitz, but it was from a concentration camp. Da gibt es Filmmaterial, ähm, ich glaube, wo die Alliierten ähm, die Gefangenen befreien und man sieht, äh, wie Menschenberge da sind und äh, ganz dürre Menschen befreit werden. Das ist schon, das geht schon unter die Haut. According to German education legislation, the country's history textbooks must include adequate coverage of Nazi Germany and school teachers must give detailed explanations of the Nazi regime. Any remark or comment that whitewashes the Third Reich and the Holocaust is prohibited. Germany's involvement in the Second World War lasted less than six years, but teachers in Germany usually spend one and a half semesters teaching their students the history of World War II. Allerdings kann man sagen, dass, dass der Nationalsozialismus nicht nur in Geschichte, sondern auch zum Beispiel in Deutsch in Bezug auf Literatur, in der Kunst in Bezug auf Bilder aus dieser Zeit in Religion oder auch in, oder auch in Biologie eine Rolle gespielt hat. Das heißt, es war schon ein Schwerpunkt. German scholars discovered that although there are many courses involving reflecting on Nazi war crimes, the students show great interest in the history of the Nazi era rather than eventually being bored by it. In some schools in my region, the students had a chance to propose a theme for an open teaching. To the great surprise of the people, the majority of the pupils and students said, Nazi time, we want to know more. By the way, the young people, they, they show an enormous engagement in keeping up the memory of this time. The Third Reich figures prominently in German education. In German primary schools, many posters and summaries of reports on the persecution of Jews and pictures about post-war reconciliation are posted on the corridor walls. This is a history textbook jointly published by Germany and France in 2006 with the word history in German and French printed on the cover page. It is made up of three volumes with the first one focusing on historical analysis including the diary of Anne Frank, the TV series The Holocaust and the apology made by Willy Brandt. It contains profound reflections on World War II. In the 1970s, German history educators began to explore how to reconcile the country's relationship with its neighbors as well as its former enemies by writing history books together. There was a very engaged educationist and he had a brilliant idea. We should change the history textbooks. So the history textbooks should create a new form of neighborhood. In 1973, historians from Germany and Poland founded a textbook committee. They published a history textbook together and after more than 30 rounds of meetings reached agreement on how to interpret unsolved historical issues arising from the Middle Ages as well as the Second World War. In the following years, Germany took similar measures to reach consensus with France and Russia on a number of historical controversies. It is textbooks like these that foster a unified understanding of history among millions of children from different countries. Pu Ping, the former director of the Institute of Modern History at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, has made friends with many scholars from Japan and Korea. Drawing on the experience of Germany, in 2002, these scholars decided to compile a unified history textbook for the children of the three countries. Then we should write a book that can be read. 
和这个右派的教科书对抗呢，我们编一本书。这本书呢，应当由我们三国学者一起来编。After repeated argument and consultation, a textbook entitled East Asia was published in 2005. It was jointly compiled by scholars from China, South Korea, and Japan, and provoked heated discussion in the three countries. Many Japanese students express their antipathy towards a range of historical issues missing from traditional Japanese history textbooks, especially colonial rule and persecution carried out by the Japanese army. I was taught in the military for 33 years. I was taught in the military for 33 years. I was taught in the military for 33 years. 平和の問題とかね、憲法の守ろうとかっていう話がね、なかなか入っていかない。南京事件なんか嘘だ。十分違反するなんかなかった。そういうふうに教えられてきてるんですよ。そういう人たちがこれからの日本を背負っていくんだから、そこは私は心配してますけど。In December 2013, the film The Eternal Zero was released in Japan. It grossed over 8.5 billion yen within a hundred days and was seen by almost 7 million people. The film is about a young Japanese man who is at a low point in his life and happens to find out that his grandfather was a kamikaze pilot. He then begins to research the history of that period. The film is based on a novel of the same name by Naoki Hayakuta. Hayakuta has repeatedly publicly denied Japan's involvement in war crimes, including the Nanjing Massacre and the Comfort Women. In fact, the film is a sympathetic depiction of kamikaze pilots. At the end of the film, the hero sees his grandfather in a zero fighter plane flying over downtown Tokyo. Implying that the prosperous Japan of today is built on the sacrifice of those so-called war heroes. When the film was released at the end of 2013, the Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, designated Naoki Hiyakuta a member of the NHK Management Committee. It is an unavoidable fact that the whole of Japanese society is moving towards the right. Opinion leaders and those in positions of power are also lurching in the same direction.